Have you ever wondered how your phone knows exactly when to buzz with a notification? Or how apps like WhatsApp, Instagram and even your bank account seamlessly deliver messages, OTPs and updates in real time without delays? What happens when there are millions or even billions of users to notify? How do these systems ensure that your notification arrives at just the right moment? without overloading servers or without spamming users. And what about personalization? How do apps decide whether to notify you immediately or wait until you are active? That's where system design comes in. A notification system isn't just about sending messages. It's about managing speed, reliability, scalability, and a personalization for billions of users across the globe. In this video, I will break down the core architecture of a notification system, the challenges we as engineers face, and the strategies that ensure your notifications arrive precisely when you need them. Let's dive into the fascinating world of system design. This video is part of my system design playlist where I will be discussing high level designs of some of the most classic system design problems. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this with your friends. We will start by first gathering requirements for our notification system design then we will dive into how to actually design the notification system. So let's look at some of the requirements. In today's world, there are different channels by which we can send notifications. Our system should support push notifications, which are sent directly to the mobile phone. It can be both iOS and Android. My second channel is going to be SMS and the third is email. And nowadays, notifications are also sent via WhatsApp. So businesses directly WhatsApp the customers regarding any updates or promotional messages. It feels more connected. So this is about the channels. Next, I want my system to be real time. For example, I am doing a banking transaction and I receive an OTP. That OTP is sent via this notification service. And I want it in real time because OTPs have an expiry and I don't want to wait 10 minutes for an OTP for a transaction. I need it quick. So yes, I want to support real-time notifications. And third, regarding the scale, I want to send out approximately 10 million notifications in a day. So that's about the requirement gathering for notification system. Now let's look at how to actually design this system. So we discussed about different channels of sending notifications. Let's see how actually these notifications get sent. So the first is notifications on iOS device. To send notifications to an iOS device, we need to use something called APNS, which stands for Apple Push Notification Service. So it looks something like you have a provider which needs to send the notification. So it will send the notification to this APNS and it will, it will send the message and the device token as well to which device this APNS needs to send the message. And then this APNS service, which is Apple's service, will push the notification to the user's device. So this is a phone, Apple phone. And this is the Apple logo. So this is how Apple push notification system works. Now for Android, the process is almost same. In place of this APNS, we have something called FCM. You might have heard of this. This is Firebase Cloud messaging managed by Google. So your provider will send message to this FCM, which will then push the notification to the user's device using the device token, which this FCM will have. Now to send SMS, we can make use of third party services, third party services like Twilio or Okta or Nexmo. So these services expose an API call your system can call the API with the user's phone number and the message and these services will then send the message to the user's mobile in the form of SMS. How these services internally work is out of the scope of this. We need to design a scalable notification system and this is just the basic of how. Similarly, for email also you can use third-party services like SendGrid or MailChimp or HubSpot. So these are like the basics of how to use channels to send messages or notifications. Now let's look at the actual system design. Let's assume you have your notification system here and there can be several triggers for this notification system. For example, we have a service A. So service A sends message to, service A wants to send a notification. 
we can have a different service let's say service b now this wants to send a notification related to updates for your app and there can be a service c as well and this wants to send notification let's say regarding any user triggered message this is service a service b and service c and this is my notification system now you might be thinking okay service a triggered some notification send it to the user service b triggered a notification send it to the user or service c triggered a notification send it to the user now this approach has a couple of problems so problem number one you don't want to bombard the user with notifications so for example someone liked a photo of user one you instantly send a notification someone commented on a photo of user one you instantly send a notification so i don't want to bombard the user with a lot of notifications so the problem with this approach is bombardment of notifications problem number two is so you will be using several channels for sending notification for example you can use whatsapp or email and for each email that you send you have to pay some money to the channels that provide the email for example you can use sendgrid to send the emails you need to pay for each sending of email so the second problem is high price to the channels and the third and most important point is so if you want to send emails synchronously the process will be slow because to send one email you have to do some processing you have to see who is the destination user you have to call the email api wait for its response so it will slow down the entire pipeline so this way of synchronous sending of notifications is not the way to go the correct way is to use an async process so you can have something like a queue so whatever notification is received by this notification system gateway send it to a queue so this is my message queue so this notification server will push the notifications to a message queue now the benefit of using message queue is we can process the notifications in async way so since processing each message is a time consuming task the other threads won't be blocked by the processing of this one message and the client system can read messages at its own pace from the message queue and the notification service can keep on pushing notifications it doesn't need to wait for the client to finish processing by the way i already have created a video on message queues on why you should use message queue and what problem does it solve so if you don't know about message queues you can refer to that video link will be visible in the i button at the top right so continuing with this the structure of the messages in the message queue can be something like it can have to which user i want to send the message and maybe the type of the notification so the consumer now reads from this message queue and here the consumer needs to be a little smart about it so for example the user in his profile he would have set some preferences like i want my notifications in a certain channel like i only want Uh, to receive my notifications in whatsapp or i want important notifications like otp sent to me via sms but my social media notifications should come to my app so all that decision making thing will be done here inside the consumer so the consumer will read the notification message it will make a decision on which channel the notification needs to be sent for example one of the channel can be whatsapp it can also be an email channel and or it can be an sms and so on or it can be an app notification now you might think okay this is the final system design but there are more cases to take care of now consider the case where after making the decision we need to send the message to a user using whatsapp let's forget about the other channels for now so the consumer made the decision to send the message using whatsapp and this is the user to which the notification needs to be sent now there is something called rate limiting so whatsapp internally has let's say a rate limit of 70 70 notifications or messages per second but it so happened that this consumer called the whatsapp api 90 times in one second well for the rest 20 notifications they will fail because we hit the rate limit of whatsapp api So for this we need to have some kind of rate limiting in place so that we consume only 70 messages per second we don't consume or send more than 70 notifications via whatsapp to solve this problem 
By the way, I have created a video on rate limiting algorithms. If you want to know what are rate limits or how it works, you can refer to my video. Link will be visible on the i button in the top right. Coming back, the question is how to enforce this rate limiting? Well, it's actually very simple. The solution is for each channel have a queue. So for example, we will have another queue. The queue can be a Kafka queue or Amazon SQS or a RabbitMQ. So let's say this is the queue for SMS. This is the queue for WhatsApp. This queue is for, let's say, email. And this is for in-app notification. Well, now it's simple. Like since we have different queues, this consumer can take the decision. This consumer will take the decision. And based on the decision, it will send the message to the client using SMS, WhatsApp, email, or in-app notification, right? And like since the, these are queues, each of these queues will have a consumer that will read from it. Now these consumers, let's say the consumer of WhatsApp will know that WhatsApp has a rate limit of 30 calls or 60 calls per second. So from this queue, it will read only 60 messages and send those 60 messages to the client in one second. Similarly, the consumer of email will know that the email service that it uses, maybe SendGrid or MailChimp, they are allowed to send only, let's say, 100 emails per second. So this client will not read more than 100 messages from this queue and then it will send those emails to the client. Now everything looks good till now, right? But there's a small problem. What if we need to send an urgent email or an urgent SMS or an urgent message on WhatsApp? Let's say it can be related to OTP. So the user is making some transaction in a bank. It is waiting for the OTP and OTP comes via notification either using SMS or using WhatsApp or email. So let's say my system A triggered an OTP. It went to this gateway and it was pushed to this message queue. Now the decision making system is needs to divide these messages into different queues based on which channel it needs to be sent based on user preferences. So this decision making saw that OTP message and it saw that this OTP needs to be sent via SMS. So it pushed the message to this queue. Now queues are mostly FIFO in nature, first in, first out. So the message that was received before will be sent to the customer first. But in this case, OTP is something that is very urgent and needs to be sent at a priority. Because if I am making a banking transaction, I don't want to wait 10 or 15 minutes for my OTP. But for some reason, this SMS queue was full and this consumer is consuming message at the rate of 60 messages in one second. And if this SMS has like 6,000 messages in pipeline, we have to wait for close to 100 seconds for that SMS to be sent. But it, it is a priority. So how do we tackle that case? How do we prioritize the sending of certain types of messages or notifications to the user? The answer is simple. Make use of priority queues. So initially for each channel, we only had one queue, but now we will have two queues for one channel. So one can be a normal queue. The other is a priority queue. So for example, this can be P0. This can be P1 for SMS. Similarly for WhatsApp, we can have a P0 and P1 where P0 is means a greater priority and P1 will be prioritized less. You can have this for all the queues. And when these consumers read from this queue, so it will prioritize to read from this P0 queue. So the consumer will try to keep the P0 queue empty, mostly empty because P0 is something like urgent priority. And once the P0 queue is almost empty, it will read from the P1 queue. So there can be a weightage associated like if there is something in P0, 80% of the times prefer to consume from the P0 queue. So this way we can prioritize the notifications as well, something which is urgent and something which is not urgent. Now instead of two queues here, we could also have like multiple queues. For example, P0 queues can be like urgent messages, can be used to send urgent notifications. The P1 queue can be something like normal notifications, something like user A liked your photo. And similarly, we can have a third queue, P2, something 
for let's say promotional messages messages that are not user specific that you want to send so these can be something that have the least priority so this is like the overall architecture of how a notification system could work now we can further optimize this notification system so we can have some thing like a digestion logic so what is the digestion logic so let's say this decision making read a message and it was for some user a now the second notification was also for the same user a and the third was also for the same user a for example someone is commenting on your photo or you just uploaded a photo and people are liking it so it can happen that a series of notifications are just for you so in that case we can hold some notifications in memory for a certain period of time for example for user a we hold notification for 60 seconds and in those 60 seconds any notification that is received by this decision making consumer is accumulated as a single message and then sent to the user so this has multiple benefits one is we are not bombarding the user with messages since we are digesting the messages into one and condensing the message we only have to send one notification instead of multiple notification for example in these 60 seconds we had received 30 messages from here we can condense them into one message or notification and send so we are also saving on cost of the channel that we are using to to send the notification and this also means less pressure on the consumers as these have to handle less number of messages so this is the final architecture of the notification system design to give a recap of this we can have various services that trigger sending of notifications these notifications are sent to something called notification gateway that pushes the message to a message queue the message in the message queue can have two things one is which user do we want to send the message to and the actual message and the type of the message type can be something like prioritization is it p0 or p1 or p2 priority the decision making consumer then reads from this message queue it checks the user preferences which channel the user has opted to receive the message at and this decision making consumer then directs the message to that particular queue based on the priority so for example if it was a p0 message it will be put in the the p0 queue of the sms channel and each channel will have a consumer the consumer will reads the messages from those queues it will try to keep the p0 queue almost empty because those are supposed to be urgent and then send the message or the notification to the consumer based on how each of the channels work for example if you want to send using sms you can use third party provider like twilio or nextmo for email you can use sendgrid or mailchimp for in app notifications we use the apple push notification service or the google firebase messaging system that is all about system design for notification system hope you like this video if you like this video share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel code with gd for more such videos till then happy coding bye bye